course, there are other ways of adding effects to audio, and that's done via the effects bin and inserting VST effects. Again, all versions of Sony ship with VSTs, and in the studio version as well as the producer, there's an excellent suite of effects known as the Senator's Suite, amongst others. There are also many others included with the producer version. Regardless of the actual VST used, the method of working with all VSTs is very similar. I'm going to shortly switch to my bus view, as this is where I tend to use most effects, and then use sends on the tracks and buses to use them. Or we can access the effects bin from three places. The track view, if the track view manager preset is set to display it, the track or bus inspector, and the console view. The basics are the same, regardless of the view used. Effects can be dragged into the bin from the browser, or we can right click in the bin and select the required effect from the audio effects submenu. Additionally, in the inspector and console view, we can click on the add effects button and choose an effect from the pop up there. As well as VST effects, there are also effects chains, which we'll look at in more detail later, and is also an external send for routing the signal to any external hardware effects that you may have available. The signal flow within the effects bin is top to bottom, and effects can be click dragged to reorder them. The effects bin is always pre fader, but if you want a post fader level sent to an effect, you'll need to insert the effect on a bus and use a send. It's also possible to control click and drag an effect from one effects bin to another. This will clone the effect, including the current settings, and place a copy in the target track. To do that, enlarge the target track so you can see its effects bin, then hold the control key down while I left click and drag the effect. It's then copied across, including any settings that you have on it. Now let's look at the difference between using an effect in a track's effects bin and using it in the effects bin of a send bus. Here I have the Senator's Delay inserted in the effects bin of a guitar track. Let's solo the track, make sure the effect's bypassed, and listen to this dry. Being a delay base effect, I want the delay to sync with the project. So let's select Host in the Tempo Sync and turn the delay on. Now let's listen to it. There's probably a too few many repeats there, so I'll turn the feedback control down to about 16%. And also just the left side's delay time slightly. It's currently set to a factor of one, and I've just changed it to a half. Now let's see how that sounds. And in the context of the mix. The main difference between setting up an effect in the effects bin and setting it up on a send bus is the mix level of wet and dry signal from the effect. To be clear, by wet I mean affected sound, and dry means the raw unprocessed sound. In a tracks effects bin, we have a mix of wet and dry. If we didn't, we wouldn't hear any dry guitar, just a delay effect. The listen mode on the delay at the moment is mix, and the setting is at about 30%, zero being completely dry, and 100% completely wet. That's how an effects level is set when it's in a track effects bin, using the mix control of the effect. Now let's see the difference in a setup for a send bus. I'm going to switch this delay off so we don't get it twice. Now let's switch to a screen set where I can see the bus and the track. Now let's look at the settings of the delay on the send bus. Most of the first settings are identical, but the mix setting is now set to 100%. There is no dry signal here at all, and just for good measure, the listen setting is on delay, meaning there'd be no dry signal, even if the mix setting was at less than 100%. In the track strips to the left, you can see the original guitar, now with the delay switched off in the effects bin, and a send inserted to this sync delay bus. So let's start playback again and have a listen. <laughs> Now 
There's too much level there at the moment, so let's reduce that right down to zero. As I start playback again, I'll increase the send level and you'll hear the effect as it starts to increase. Let's listen to that again, this time in the full mix. Now I'll play the mix back again and then I'll turn the send off and hopefully you'll hear how much fuller the guitar sounds with a slight delay added. Hopefully you'll now have a better understanding of the differences between effects in track effects bins and using them on sends. Most of the VSTs that come with X2 are fairly common effects and a detailed look at them is a whole series of videos on its own. I am however going to take a very brief look at Armix. Not only is it new to X2, but it's also a slightly unusual effects processor. There are so many possibilities for this that this is barely going to brush the surface but the intention of this introduction is to get you up and running with how it works. Here I have it inserted in a track's effects bin with a stereo wave on a track ready for playback. So let's see what it is and what it can do. It can be used to isolate instruments, remove vocals to create karaoke type effects or for unique special effects. It's designed for use on stereo mixers and to isolate and then control areas of that mix, such as applying effects. There's no reason that you can't use it on individual instruments or tracks to create special effects though. So let's open up the interface. And the first thing you'll notice is a centre area, which displays a visual representation of the audio. The centre line is the middle of the mix, with the left to right axes representing the stereo field. The vertical axis represents the frequency, with the higher frequencies at the top and the lower at the bottom. Volume of the material is indicated by colour, with red being the loudest and blue quietest. Black is silence. Right-clicking in this window will reveal the cursor's current frequency level and the musical note represented by that frequency. Inside the center area is the frame represented by a red outline. This has two basic selectable shapes, a rectangle and an oval. They're selected by using these buttons to the left. These shapes are fully adjustable for position, size and shape by click-dragging with the mouse. To the left and right of the main area are volume and pan controls. To the left, the inside volume and pan, and to the right, the outside volume and pan. These control the volume inside the frame and outside respectively. The pan controls allow repositioning of the relevant audio within the stereo field. So let's have a listen back, and you'll hear the difference as I use the level controls to isolate first in the frame and then outside the frame. Then I'll change the frame around both in shape, size and position, and you'll hear what I mean by many possible uses. The first thing you'll notice when I start it is there seems to be no effect, and that's because the inside level and outside level are equal.
That should give you an idea of how you can isolate sounds. As you can hear, it's very comprehensive in what you can and can't hear and probably limited only by your imagination in its uses. Let's have a further look at the rest of the interface. To the left of the VST window are two more controls, one for effect control and the other for noise suppression. Here an effect can be chosen from two compression types, three delays of various lengths and three types of reverb. There are four noise cancellation types, this, hum, wind and aircon. To the top right, as you saw me use in the demonstration there, there's a bypass button which allows AB comparisons. Combining all of these controls allows many possibilities for sound shaping and manipulation. As you saw in the demonstration, the audio we wish to manipulate can first be isolated by using the frame and the inside and outside volume controls in combination. Isolating is probably easiest to do by lowering the outside volume completely while sizing and positioning the frame as required. Reversing the volume levels removes the area inside the frame for the mix, leaving the outside area only audible. Once the audio has been isolated, it's possible to use the noise cancellation and effects levels to achieve the results you want. Of course, if you wish to process the output further, you can always send it to another bus or output and process it on that using any processors that you want. And that's a very brief look at Armix.